Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, it is time for the 2023 CPL shirt ranking. As we know, Macron absolutely has crushed it from jump. Every single year, the shirts in this league are mwah. They're so incredibly well designed and this year is no exception. We are gonna go through and rank them into our tier list right here. We are going to go through each and every shirt one by one, as always, I know you care deeply about my thoughts on these shirts. Why am I the authority on one soccer fashion? Check this out. Suspenders, bow tie, CPL awards. Mm, so incredibly good, just like these shirts. Let's get into it. And we will begin out west with Pacific. They went back to that primary purple and both of these are a work of art. We are starting out hot. Why is there gold on the shirt? You might be asking yourself, they aren't the reigning CPL champions. I don't know. I just think it's a stylistic choice and it looks very, very good, especially that outline around the crest on the primary purples. It is a very nice touch. The new sponsor, tell us. Love that it's white on the primary. It pops without being too much if they were to do the gold instead. And it is a nice little black on the alternate there. First thing I thought of when I saw the spirit bear on the primary is that Easton Ungaro is 6'6 six, six or 6'7, six, depending on the, his mood when you ask him that day. And he is going to be charging at keepers and defenders with that growling bear on his torso again. Don't really know why there's a spirit bear there, but it works. It looks pretty good. And that West Coast alternate is just something else. So let's throw these into our initial rankings here. It's not my favorite Pacific shirt ever, but it is really good. And I'll, honestly, as much as I would love for that alternate to be a little bit more vivid, that blue color, I think it's subtle and everything just clicks for me. It's gonna be really, really nice. I hope they wear them a ton this year. So a strong start for Pacific. Next up, we are going to go to the newcomers, a new side on the block. That is Vancouver FC with their initial offering for 2023, their debut season. They've gone with the black and the red and black hoops. The black, listen, I will preface this by saying I have never been the biggest fan of black, silver, and white shirts. To me, there is just so much you can do with color. So I was curious what they were gonna do with an all black. You knew there was gonna be at least one and while they've listed all the communities in and around Vancouver, which is a nice touch, it just doesn't scream perfection to me. I have very high standards for these shirts. Macron, again, has historically done such a good job. I can see why Vancouver did this for their first year, show some love, become welcoming to the community. And I do think it is the right version of the logo that they are using on the front of the shirt with the V. The silver is a nice accent, it's just, good but not great for me on the primary <laughs> now the alternate is entirely different because this is what i've been wanting to see from a cpl club for so long it's somehow original and authentic all at once we know i have an affinity for the game of rugby this gives me a little bit of rugby without being too much of a departure away from football i think it is very very well done so let's rank these again this isn't me saying I don't love it. It's just, it didn't wow me. So the Vancouver primary is gonna go into the C category. I have to put these up in the A for the time being. Let's go across the Rockies now and talk about Cavalry. With this photo, I will admit, you can really see the detail at the bottom of the shirt, which I think you kind of lost out when they were first announced. You have the bison, you have the mountains, the Rockies, of course, and some forests. It's, it's just brilliantly Calgary on the shirt without being too busy. I will be honest, when these first came out, I didn't love them, especially the primary, but they've grown on me. And I think when we see them on the pitch, they're really going to really take hold. The sash is back. I don't know that I love the gradient. I think it's a bit unnecessary for my liking. We do have to talk about the alternate though. Um, listen, it's nice to see the clubs honoring their supporters with all the rain and lightning delays that they had last year. You get the bolt across the front. It kind of gives you that harmony with the sash. I didn't notice that until right now looking at the other sash right beside it, but it's, it's neat. It's, it's okay. I didn't love them when they first came out. I still don't know that I am super enthusiastic about them, mainly because their greens last year were so well done. So to see them go to the black with the lightning bolt, it's it's cool, it's fine. It's not my favorite by any means, but I, I think the red is certainly growing on me. So let's throw these in there. The red is gonna go B for now. 
And I mean, if I have to pick between the two blacks, I'm going to give it to the lightning bolt just because it's a little bit different than just the names. That's where they'll slide in for now. But I have a feeling when we get more teams on this list, then we'll adjust accordingly. Valor is next. And let's be honest, I think from day one, Valor has had my year on year favorites. They just do not seem to miss. And that's saying something because this year's addition, this year's combination might be their best yet. The red, the primary is just beautiful. They managed to find a way to add details without being too excessive, too over the top. Yes, I will feel biased until they get their own or a different shirt sponsor. One soccer is there. I feel represented by this shirt. So of course I'm going to love it. The way that they managed to do that little bit of gold on the sleeves and on the neckline and the neckline, the gold on our left is one color and then it's a little bit darker on the other, which almost gives you more of a V, which is kind of cool for Valor. I appreciate that. And then the, the city map design, again, it's a nice way to add something different to the shirts without being over the top it too much. Let's talk about the next one. The bear, velociraptor, whatever claw that that is. Maybe it's a lion, which would make sense with their mascot. But it, I don't know what it is. I just know that I like it. It's kind of grungy. It's kind of edgy, but it's also tidy. I don't know how they've managed to pull it all together. The black is honestly probably my favorite of any of them that we've seen so far. It's somehow unique without being too far away from what Valor has done. They've done the split colors before. They had the one year where they couldn't seem to figure out the collar. That is definitely not a problem anymore. These things are going to sell very well and they're going to look really, really good at IG Field. The red is an improvement on Cavalry's and the black, oh, it's really good, isn't it? Let's throw you beside Pacific for now. That's how highly I rate that alternate. I hope that they do a pretty close to a 50-50 even split with them because they're both A pluses if you can get that high. And uh, I'm comfortable with where they sit right now. The champions are next, Forge. And there is a lot to unpack here with the design because when it first was released, you were kind of taken aback because there is a lot going on on this primary shirt. They have the chains, it's a lot. It's in your face. It's Forge. And I think that's what I appreciate about the, the continuity of the design is that you still see that with the orange that they've made their own in the CPL. It does say Forge. This one is well-intentioned, but it somehow falls very flat for me. It, it almost gives me like Halloween store vibes where it's got the orange. It sticks out with the Tim Hortons sponsorship across the front, the orange Macron. It just... I don't know. It looks really good in person. I will say we I did a supporters trivia event in Hamilton last Friday and to see some of the people already wearing them already, I will give it credit where it works better in person. I think especially in a long sleeve variant where you do have that black that's more solid and, and continuous that helps a little bit. It's just not their best offering, especially considering some of the others. So we'll throw these into the tier list. I'm going to put it beneath Cavalry's primary, and honestly, the, the alternate is just, it's not for me. It's not for me. It's going to be our first in the D tier. From that, we go to the best. I think I can say that confidently. No, I will say this. We will go to the best combined kit release of any CPL clubs, and York United, they are right up there with Valor. They did have the big miss. We will always remember fondly the York Region squiggle line that did not do well, but if that was a wake-up call to get them back on the straight and narrow for years forthcoming, well, then, then it served a purpose because they have been so good since that debacle with the Blacks. Here they are, and it's perfection honestly that that white with the carlsberg sponsorship I, I don't know that i've ever seen a better cpl kit i'm that high on it it's somehow simple and clean with the two vertical lines right down the torso you get a little of that argyle gradient in there and it just draws attention to the sponsor which doesn't feel out of place and for a lot of football supporters they'll feel nostalgic seeing carlsberg back on the kits these primaries are a home run I cannot wait to see them in person. And I think Osase Di Rosario and Mobabuli are going to score plenty of goals in these shirts. The green, the two-tone is really difficult to do well, and they have done it very well. Again, you get that pattern on the front that is gives it some texture without taking the focal point away. It's very clean. It's the green and blue stripes still of York United. And then that blue collar is wonderful without going full on and having the buttons on the front. I think that would have made it a bit busy. I love both of these. They are absolute home runs. I think York United deserves a ton of credit. 
and straight to the top with that primary. No debate for me whatsoever. The green is good. I don't know that it's great, um, but it's going to go there. It's it, I'll, I'll always mention it year on year. I'm biased with the purple. It's my favorite color. It's tough to, to pick a winner. I just think that for now it's going to go there, but I'm a little bit on the fence. I know it's a tier. I just don't know how I feel ranking it in, in line with those two, but the best offering by far for me so far, York United, very well done. To Atletico Ottawa, the regular season champs, we knew we were going to get some variation of red and white stripes, and they always take a bit of fun with the alternates, and we'll see how much the alternates are used this year. We know that they like to be in the Atletico de Madrid family red and white stripes, so we'll see it a lot, and we see it on the screen right now. My first reactions to this were disappointed. Um, I think there's somehow not enough stripes on the front. And then the pattern, which is the outline of the city of Ottawa, which is cool. It, it adds some digital camo that I don't know how it lands. Great to see Maple Lodge Farms on the front of the shirt. It is nice to have more and more sponsors coming into the league. It shows growth and it shows that Atletico Ottawa is getting the attention of other clubs. So I'll give them kudos for that. Somehow the, the, gradient blue and white screams to me early photoshop ice hockey graphic where you're trying to design like a power ranking and you wanted some kind of background hands up i've done this where you would just google ice and then you put that pattern in behind it's good but it's not great for me and for that i have to dock some of the points on it i'm just a little bit underwhelmed because i think last year with the city of ottawa flag and the, the red and white stripes that they had done last year, which I think was the best variation that we've seen from them yet, I can't put them super high. And this is going to seem harsh, but it, it's low for me. And I think it's a C and a D just because they've done better in the past. And while I think it might grow, they're going to be busy. And for me, that's enough to dock them some serious points. So we're always going to get red and white stripes from Atletico Ottawa. I just hope that they try to bring some more of them back in the future. I will add a shout out to the back of the shirt that has the dub on it for the supporters who have made themselves right up there with Halifax in terms of the most vocal, the, the largest contingent of them, and, and they're really growing something special. So I did think that was a lovely tribute from the club to put them on the front or the, the back of the shirt. That leaves us with the Halifax Wanderers who have had some doozies in the past, I'll be honest. Until this year, their original blue was probably my favorite that they had done. But this year, different story. They were actually the first to unveil their shirts. So we've had the longest time to get used to them. And that primary is the best shirt that they have ever put out. It is again in that theme where there's enough going on that it's not super distracting. From what I can remember from the press release, it has to do with the waves crashing over the shoreline. I, I don't know that I fully buy it. I just know that it looks good. The VW logo is big and it's tough to avoid that. They have always been big on the shirts, but somehow it doesn't feel entirely out of place on this. And I, I'm just glad to see they've gone back to that darker blue. It's that royal rich. It looks so good. And then the the silver on the sleeves and on the collar, it's, it's incredibly well done. I think, again, this is my favorite Halifax Wanderer shirt to date. They did a fantastic job with it. This is where I'm split on our final, the 16th shirt, and that is the colorful trim as the tribute to, I think it's supporters and community. It's different and yet they didn't lean into it. I'm gonna be picky here. If you're going to do that, do that bold. Go bold and we've seen that bold in this league generally does well. I would have loved to have seen the entire kit with that pattern if they really wanted to lean into it. Otherwise, it's just a busy addition to a staple classic shirt. You have the, the nice wording in the background on the front. It is all very clean. So for me, just go with that, that navy blue and call it a day if that's the direction you're going to go into. Either go all in or save it for like a third. And, and that's just my take on it. These are sensational. So they go in the sensational. There's another S word, by the way, category. And these are fine. They're fine. Yeah. Okay. So this is a good balance, I think. I want it to be higher on the away, but again, because it's it seems like it's having a bit of a personality complex or just not sure what it is, um, it's, it's going to stay in the low tier. Now the time to evaluate, see if I want to boost anyone higher or lower. York United, it stays. The primary is the best of all of them. I'm actually going to put Halifax's primary higher than Pacific's alternate as much as I do enjoy it. I am going to put York United ahead of Vancouver. 
unless it's the long sleeve all the time, then maybe they get a bit more love from me. For an initial throwing in the community, you can go, I'm just not high on that Atletico Ottawa primary, which is harsh because they've done such a good job, but I'm going to keep that order there to the final tier. The Halifax Wanderers, again, if they didn't do the busy sleeves and the trim, they might be into the C's for me because I think it is really sharp, but they didn't, so it's going to stay as a miss. And Atletico Ottawa with the ice theme, it's cool. Don't dislike it. It's not better than Halifax's. And for me, that Forge alternate is just the the lowest on the totem pole this year. Quite simply for me, it's, it is just where it needs to belong. So this is where I'm going to keep my rankings. This is when I say, I want to hear what you think. Come at me if you don't disagree, or if you don't agree with all of them. What did I horribly miss on? What did I get right? Which is probably most of them. Let's just be honest. But I still want to see your list in the comment section below. Even if you just want to go club by club, you can combine them together. Let me know what you think of them. And another challenge for you, despite the team you support, I want to know if you were to get as a gift or go out and purchase another club shirt which one would you choose from the lot? Because I think that's a good way of saying that I really rate this, even though I would never be seen wearing them when my team is playing because we understand your colors. But that's it for our tier list, our second edition of this video. Hope you enjoyed putting it together as much as I enjoyed talking about Kit. Again, leave a comment below, like this video if you haven't liked it already. Let us know you want to see more of these in the future because I could talk about Kits all day. It's just one of my favorite hobbies to do. And make sure you subscribe to the channel before you leave here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the CPL starts this Saturday, April 15th, and we won't have to wait long to see these threads in action. I hope you are as excited as we are here at One Soccer.